Hey guys, welcome back to Dendas. Um, today I'm going to review the Sunbeam Torino. Um, I had this machine since uh, January 2019 and there's not there's not a ton of reviews on this so I decided I'll do one today. Um, but if you're in a quick rush and you don't watch the whole video, uh, the short story is I would not recommend this machine. Uh, I would probably take the Breville dual boiler over this particular machine and we'll see why in a bit. Anyway, more on this machine. On the exterior, um, as you can see, it's, it's, it, it is pretty looking. Um, stainless tube built um, all over the place. Um, you've got a E61 light portafilter. Um, sorry, group head. Uh, but it's not a true E61 group head. This just looks like it. Um, this machine is a triple thermal block system, so it's not a boiler system. So the benefit of that is it'll heat up real quick. And we'll see that. So what well, that's saving up, I'll talk more about it. So okay. Alright, so this machine uh, uses a vib vibrational pump, so it's not a rotary pump. Um, so most of the talent machines that look like this are using a rotary pump, so it's a lot quieter. So this one is a little bit more noisy. Um, it houses a it houses a 2.5 liter uh, water jug here that you can remove and refill. It comes with its own. Uh, tamper. It comes with a single and a double um, basket with that's pressurized, but it also comes with the standard ones, single and two cups. Okay, and you can see it's it's doing its thing. It's warming up, so the steam coming out here is normal. It's part of how this machine operates, so don't be too concerned about that. Okay. Now, so several quirks about uh, what Sunbeam has decided to do. So, so normally tempers are actually quite um, that comes with coffee machines that ship with them. They're normally quite rubbish. This one is quite okay. Um, it is. It's measuring at about. Hopefully, you can see it. It's measuring about uh, 58 point, uh, almost 58.3 thereabouts, okay? So it's not too bad, but the quirk is this part of filter, the diameter it is actually not 58.5, it's actually 59. So if you measure it, hopefully you could see it, uh, there you go, so graduations right about there, so we're reading at 59. So what that means is that your temper can actually slide, it's not a really good fit, even though it's you could consider it the, the correct size, um, it's not quite very nice. Um, so I would recommend getting a VSD basket to go with it. The 20 gram one will fit on this machine just fine. Um, and the VSD one obviously will, um, the design is a lot better, it's roughly about, hopefully you can see it, it's roughly about 58.5. So a 58.5 uh, tampon will fit on here quite nicely. Okay, so uh, moving on. So the portal filter, um, it's a nice um, I would say it's quite well made, it's quite solid, uh, if you drop it on your feet you would actually feel it. Um, but I don't think it's fully stainless steel, I have a feeling it's brass that is plated. Um, so that's all to know about it. Um, the only nice feature about it, this is it has this um, rubber feet there so you can actually rest it on your countertop and you can tap it and it won't damage your countertop. So that's that's what's nice about it. 
Okay. So, what you uh, may not know is that looking at a machine like this, uh, because it looks like the, the Italian um, built machines, like for example the ECMs, uh, the Rocket, the, the Profitac, uh, so on and so forth, you would assume that those are actually true wilds and this is also a true lever. But that's actually not the case because, again, this is a, a triple terminal block. Um, it's not a boiler, so those are actually solenoid. So um, let's see if you can hear the click. So you see that it's it's just it's just a slightly uh, turn, and you're like, and you're fully on. Okay, so. It is not a true, um, like a valve system that you'll find on, on boiler machines. Um, okay, uh, same goes with the lever. With the lever, um, it's, it's just on and off. It doesn't, there is no so-called um, capabilities of like slightly turning it on to let the, the pressure from the boiler through. Um, it's just it's just on. Okay. Likewise with your um, um, hot water outlet, same thing. Um, so that's the annoying thing about it. It's not. It's not truly. It. It just looks like it, but it's not it. Okay. Um, this does have a PID, so you can hitting the program. You can. Um, change the temperature uh, of the water that's coming out from your croupe. You can go up to 98 degrees, um, all the way down to about 86, okay? So depending on the type of roast of coffee you have, you might want to play around with temperature if you want. Um, you can also go into your um, steam. You can actually control the pressure. So since you can't control it from directly from this knob by turning it slightly open and fully open, um, this machine compensates for that lack of feature by introducing um, the various um, uh, steam duty. So you can go from one, which is the, the least, I believe it is, and then all the way up to four, which is um, full blast. Oh, actually it goes seven, sorry. Seven, and then it goes full blast, okay? Uh, and then on top of that, you could also change your uh, pre-infusion rate, which is P1, and I think it only goes up to P2. Four? Yep, it only goes up to P4. Now I can't remember which is which, whether P1 is the shortest and P4 is the longest pre-infusion or it's the other way around. Not sure about it, but let's not worry about that. Okay, so so that's the, the thing about this machine. Now, um, another quirky thing about this machine is if you have a look at the um, pressure ga gauge, which is measuring the pressure directly um, at the um, at, the, at the group head, um, you'll notice that, um, hopefully, wait, can you use, oh, you probably can't see, let me zoom that in, okay, let me turn that, okay, maybe, hopefully you could just about see this, okay, so the really annoying thing about that is, it's trying to convince you that the optimal pressure for brewing espresso is around 11 bars, um, starting from 11 all the way up to 14 bars. Now, if you've seen some of their marketing material, um, you'll notice that um, you'll notice that um, their optimal range has was well, slightly different. Um, in fact, the green one actually goes from 8 all the way on to uh, 12, I think it was. Um, so some of the machines do, does it. So my one, they've somehow changed it. I don't know why. Um, so if you look into the manual, there is a diagram of the um, pressure gauge. And you can, you can see, there it is. So hopefully you could see, oh, that's not focusing. Uh, oh, there it is. So you could see that they're saying uh, your optimal is roughly about 11 um, to 14. So this is the one, the major reason why I say 
you don't want to buy this machine because it does not have an overpressure valve or an OPV. So what it means is that if you're targeting a specific flow rate uh, and you want to get your shot within say 25 seconds or so, if you were to make your, and it was, let's just say your shot was running too fast. If you were to um, uh, grind your, your bean finer, what will happen is the, the pressure will then actually increase all the way um, to the, say the 14 uh, bar range if you go fine enough. Uh, but then we all know what will happen is that if your puck prep is not really good, then you're just gonna get more channeling. So then your shot still comes out within 25 seconds and it still tastes um, actually really bad. So the Breville machines actually do have an OPV. So it will maintain nine bars should it should your pup pr provide enough resistance to push back. Uh, so then the machine doesn't go full tilt all the way to, uh, I've, I've grinded fine enough before and it actually went all the way to 16 bars and obviously the flow was slow. Coffee tasted terrible. Um, so you can't get a consistent um, shot with this um, coffee machine. Now, um, back to how I said that it's a quick startup. It is a quick startup, but you still should actually let your machine stabilize um, for about maybe 10, 20 minutes because if you touch here, it's only just now getting warm to the touch. So I can still touch it. And so you want to keep that um, warmed up. So likewise, you put your group head on, you would run just maybe just a brief. Okay, so you just run just a little bit of water through just so that you can get your um, portafilter heated up as well because otherwise it will completely sink the temperature when you when you start brewing. So again, you still do take time to kind of um, get the machine to stabilize. Okay, so the triple block, as I mentioned before, you have one directly in here and one for um, uh, that's connected to the terminal block that uh, would then feed this. So two is actually, two terminal blocks are actually allocated um, for your espresso shot um, right here. And one of it is allocated for your steam. So because it is, it can mimic a dual boiler system in the sense that you can brew um, your coffee and steam at the same time. So, so not a problem. Okay, uh, but what you can't do is, uh, again, it's all on a solar night system. Uh, you can't activate your um, your group head and your hot water at the same time. So if this is on, nothing will come out from here, as you can see. Makes sense. Okay, so now I'm just going to quickly test how good that temperature stability is. I've got just a, a cheap-ish thermometer. I'm going to just, this is not obviously not an ideal setup, but it's going to be good enough for me. So let's just see, oh, what did I set it at? Okay, it's at 94 degrees and let's see how stable that temperature is going to be. Is it going there? Nope, it doesn't want to register properly. Uh, let's, let's see what's the water like. Okay, no, so it doesn't... Again, okay, this setup is not ideal. So I can't actually measure the water directly coming out. So maybe I still have to let the um, the group head heat up a little bit more before I could actually, and the portafilter heat up before I can actually measure the actual temperature. So, oh. Okay, yeah, it's next to impossible to try and measure this, um, the temperature this way. 
but uh, I guess we're just going to have to trust that the PID is actually good. Okay, so now let's tip this out. Okay, now throughout, if you keep this machine on long enough, there is an auto shut off. Um, I can't remember what the time limit was. So if you leave it on and you don't touch any of the functions, you don't um, turn any of these knobs or, or pull the lever, um, it will it will turn off by itself. Um, so, so it's handy to know. Uh, but of course, if you somehow keep using it throughout the day, um, the it will keep dispelling water through the um, drip tray here. Okay, that's a, that's a known thing about this machine. Um, so just keep that in mind. There you go. Okay, water's coming out. All right, let's put that back. Okay, so so there, that's it. That's the uh, Sunbeam uh, machine for you, uh, the Torino. So I'm gonna try and and brew uh, a shot of espresso. I'm not gonna drink it because it's well it doesn't really taste good unfortunately and there's no point dialing your shot in because this machine is it's really hard to get a consistent shot again because a lack of a no pv so that's the downfall of that machine of this machine so uh it does come with a grinder um there's nothing uh, there's nothing fancy about this grinder it has a um, fine to course adjustment um, I think the only thing I would say about this grinder is it's it's quite silent. Um, I mean, it still makes noise. It, it, it is a grinder, but it's not that loud. Um, having said that, the only thing about this uh, grinder is um, the range is actually not that great. So it's good. It's dedicated for espresso. So if, if you're only ever doing uh, espresso, which is what it's made for, I suppose, um, it's not a problem because then you have actually quite a lot of control between um, the fineness of your ground, but if you want to go full range, for example, you want to do pour over coffee, this might not uh, might not do it for you. So, at the maximum um, setting, it still might be a little bit too fine for you for for pour over. So I wouldn't recommend this um, for anything other than um, espresso brewing. So okay, I'm gonna try and do a just a standard recipe. I'm gonna do twenty grams in and about 40 grams out so a uh, one to two ratio so that's true Okay, now I don't have a WDT, so this is going to be my poor man's WDT, and I'm just going to break up any clumps that's in here. Okay, and then okay, let's see how that goes. Let's see what this looks like. Okay, look at that. The pressure is actually quite high. It's about in between 13 to 14 bars of pressure. Um, and it's finished in 21 seconds. Now, you might think, well, 21 is too quick, and you're probably right. It's too quick. Um, it's probably under extracted. And so, but again, if you want to delay 
the shot, in other words, you want to control the flow rate of that, you can't because if you ground that finer, the pressure is just going to go up. And then, well, again, then your puck wrap will then suffer. So again, it's, again, not bad looking, but yep, that's now sour already. I'm just going to taste it just because. Whoa, yeah, that is really sour, really, really sour, and really, really acidic. So that's definitely under extracted. Okay, there's nothing much you can do um, because this machine doesn't have an OPV. So don't buy this machine. Um, it's a really bad machine, and perhaps that's why there's not a lot of full length dedicated reviews about this machine because it's terrible okay so the puck is it's not bad looking um, it's um, it's not super dry but it's not wet either so cleanup is quite clean um, okay so if you have already purchased this machine, what are you going to do about this bad coffee? Well, you've got one or two options. Uh, one of the options is get a Breville and chuck this out because it's it's really just paperweight at this, at this point because no amount of tinkering you can do in terms of getting a um, um, precision made basket etc etc nothing will actually fix and compensate for the lack of OPV. Now I forgot to mention I think at the time when I purchased this machine it was going for about thousand one hundred dollars so I didn't pay the full price there's no way I was paying the full price the full I think it's 2.1 grand that they were asking for it um, it's not worth it's not worth the money let's just put it that way um, at least with Breville, the dual boiler, you have an OPV. So then you should be able to get more consistent shots. But this one here won't get you there. So, um, so your second option is, if you have this machine and you're really disappointed, like I am, um, despite how good it looks, um, if it doesn't make good coffee, then it's just, well, there's no point really. I mean... A Ferrari with a, an engine of a Toyota Yaris is not just it's not going to get you there so um, so the second option is that I saw in the forum that people have actually modded their machine so to install an OPV okay so that is what I'm actually going to do I'm going to attempt to hack this machine uh, and install an OPV now it goes without saying, if you're going to open up your machine and you're going to tinker with it, if you have bought just recently purchased this brand new, it's going to void all warranty. So, so attempt it at your risk. But my, for me, I think this is already out of warranty. This is already three years and a bit years old now. So warranty is already gone anyway. So I can do as I please. And plus, I was going to, I was planning on chucking it away anyway. So. Um, why not have a go? Okay, so. So, I've actually bought and already put together. Uh, this is actually the OPV that I'm attempting to install. So what it does really is water from your um, pump goes in here and, and it will come out from here. But if it exceeds um, nine bars, um, then water will then exit here to maintain nine bars. Um, um, at this outlet over here and it's adjustable so I can I can actually increase it to 10 or decrease it to to 8 if I want um, so I'm gonna try and put this on I will link in, into the description um, um, the guy that wrote the blog about installing an OPV so this is not an original idea this I'm just merely following um, um, the blog post so anyway if it works There'll be a second video. If it doesn't, well, don't buy the Sunbeam Torino. It's a terrible machine. So anyway, 
Have a good day. See you guys.